Archie's Madhouse, issue 26. Sabrina says that everybody at the ball is having fun except her. Why is she there? Because Della forced her to. Out of complete and utter nowhere, she says she doesn't like to use any of her powers normally. The only way this can make sense is if this was a completely different universe from the previous stories. Where not only did she love using magic and being a witch, but she abused it for Della. This is out of character for any Sabrina. It could be explained because she's tired of using her magic because she knows how likely it is to backfire on her. But not explaining that just makes it confusing. She thinks this is an emergency. Typical teenage girl. And she spikes the punch with love potion. Why? First she says she's not okay with using magic. Right in front of a guy who would logically turn around and talk to her because of it. And then she's fine with using a spell that most witches would logically be horrified by. If witches aren't even allowed to date, I guess the only reason love potions are allowed is under the condition that they'll be used against mortals. You'd think all she'd have to do is point and maybe have to say a spell to get him to fall in love. But for some reason they balance it by forcing love potions to be necessary. She also calls the love potion by a number. How are there over 72 different types of love potions? A bunch of guys run towards Sabrina. How did she think this wouldn't backfire on her? They fall in love with an ugly girl instead, and she says she fouled up. Somehow. I didn't even know she meant to get them to love her. She's not allowed to date at all. So why would she try to do this? I thought she was trying to get everyone who would drink the punch to fall in love with the first person they'd see to cause chaos. She sees the guy she likes the looks of and casts a spell to brainwash him into asking her for a dance. So why didn't you do this the first time? He says that's very strange, and when she talked, I immediately wondered if something would go wrong for her. It turns out he's the world's worst dancer and steps on her foot. It's good that she's getting karma for causing chaos at the dance just because she was jealous that everyone else was happy, instead of just leaving the dance and going home like a normal person. Rather than pointing at him to make him a great dancer, she tells him to go out on the veranda where he can't do any harm. Let me guess, that won't stop him. She asks him to do his stuff and calls him lover boy and he gets nervous, so of course there's more in store for him. He's also really bashful. She says out loud in front of him, well, we'll fix that, and gives him a pendant to watch and hypnotizes him with magic into feeling bold. Why'd she have to waste time with a pendant instead of just instantly zapping him and brainwashing him like before? He feels a wild urge taking possession of him. At least him being a loser gives him a good subtle message of, not every handsome guy is a great catch. As a punishment for not accepting him for who he is, she overdid it. So he runs off to do what he always wanted to do and kiss a girl named Mary Jane. Wow, her actions really had consequences. And since she asked him what came over him, I'm just left to assume she doesn't want it. She leaves the dance thinking this just isn't her night, and she lost her hex appeal. You'd think a witch with a huge variety of powers would be able to do a lot more to ruin the dance way better. But she's trying to be subtle to hide the fact that she's a witch, and there are witches, because I guess witches want to be kept a secret. So it makes sense that she ran out of ideas, with a very limited potential pool of spells to choose from that would be subtle. It makes sense because she's discouraged after failing a lot. You'd think she could easily brainwash plenty of people in the dance into turning on each other easily if all she wanted was chaos. But apparently what she really wanted was a date to the dance. Can't she conjure one up just fine? She plans on flying home on the broom she left outside that lucky for her wasn't stolen when she was leaving it alone. She explains that she learned how to ride side saddle at the Witches Academy. Then she gets a splinter. Too bad she didn't have a magically splinter-proof broom. A guy asked her what happened, and his confusingly calm demeanor made me suspicious that he wouldn't be as nice as he seemed. He's a medical student. Some girls come up to her, and fortunately for her, neither of them is dating him at the moment. So in a twist, she actually does end the story happily. It's nice of her to hug him, saying that he's the first piece of good luck she's had all night. But why was the villain given a happy ending? This whole story was dedicated to making things go wrong for her to punish her for not respecting the guys' consent. A problem she wouldn't have had if she had Harvey to date. She spiked 
the punch with love potion for no reason when she could have just brainwashed the guy into dancing with her in the first place, which she does, but then she doesn't make him a good dancer for some reason. And then she doesn't accept him for the nervous guy he is, when obviously that'd be the right thing to do. So making him bold to make some kiss some other girl who didn't want it. So a lot of things go wrong for her. So she's really lucky she got that guy, after she was too dumb to think to conjure up a date of her own. But the happy ending doesn't feel memorable, because it doesn't continue after that point. So we don't get to see how happy he actually made her.